Chelsea fam, what's up? It is Queen Chef, Chef Arthur Healer, and I am here for episode four of Home Cook Conversations. And guess what? Today, we got another good one. We have another good topic, and so I'm gonna get right into it. Today's show topic is how to forgive. So, pretty straightforward, but here's the thing about this conversation that you need to know. I understand that everybody is always telling us we need to forgive, is how important it is to forgive. Forgiveness is for you, not the other person. But the thing that never gets touched on is how. And I always hear people asking like, what, you know, or saying, I don't know how to do that. Like, I want to no longer be angry. I want to no longer be sad or depressed about whatever this thing may be that's bothering you, whether it's childhood trauma, whether it's a breakup that you still need to heal from, whether it, no matter what it is, we always get the, what we need to do. You need to do this, you need to do that, but we never get how. So that's what we're talking about today. Not just you need to forgive, what forgiveness looks like. How do you get to the point of being able to forgive? How do you begin to start that healing journey? So again, this is Home Cook Conversations. I'm Queen Chef and we're gonna jump right into it. All right y'all, so for this conversation, I'm prepping me some little cucumbers here. I'm actually juicing them. Um, so normally if I'm doing like a cucumber salad or something, I like English cucumbers, but I'm juicing these to make me some cucumber mint and lemon juice. So I'm just using regular cucumbers. I'm gonna prep those while we have this conversation. So, all right, jumping right into it, guys. How to forgive. One of the first things on my journey, and I, you guys know for these conversations, I like to reference me as much as possible because I'm the best point of reference that I have because I've seen it firsthand, I experienced it firsthand, I was there, I did it, right? And I'm still doing it. So the first thing that I had to do and learning how to forgive was determine why I was actually upset. Now that would seem obvious, like if something happened to you and it's a, a specific event that happened to you, then it might be more obvious. For those of us like myself who didn't have a specific event, but it may have been just the way you grew up, um, resentment you might have toward people, uh, things you feel like, for me, I know my resentment in my early adulthood, my college years, my, a lot of my resentment was for the things that I did not know. I became very angry with my parents because I felt like there were so many things that, ooh, y'all, <laughs> a little feeling just came over me when I said that. I got a little teary-eyed. In my early adulthood, um, I thought about all the things I felt like I should have known already. All the things I felt like everybody else knew and I didn't. Or simply the resources that I felt like other people had that I didn't have. Um, you know, the fact that people could call home and, and ask their parents for things and I feel like I didn't have that ability. I didn't feel like I had either that, whether it was that either relationship with my dad or I didn't want to feel like a burden on my mom or I didn't feel like she was going to have it. You know, regardless of what the reason was, I developed a lot of resentment. And so I said that to say, you have to first, that was just one of the things for me because it wasn't like, you know how some people will have specific traumas or specific occurrences like sexual abuse or growing up um, in really poverty stricken, homes where their parents are out of the home they might be getting raised by another family member you know it may not be one specific event but just determine where a lot of your trauma was created and why you're still upset right now so that's the connection that you have to make first and for me like i said the connection at, in my early adulthood was that resentment and that resentment came from not knowing or having things i felt like i should have known or had or have been taught um earlier in life so determine that that's that's step one for me and learning how to forgive figure out what you're mad at what you're mad at right now and how it's affecting you right now that's one step two in how to forgive first why you're mad two inform yourself equip yourself with information learn the story that's what i call it learn the story talk to your parents if your parents aren't around and so maybe somebody else raised you talk to people who knew them ask questions and what this what this, me personally what this did for me when i learned my mom's story when I, I we sat at a restaurant once it was after a big blow up with my some of my siblings and um you know my mom recognized during this blow up while it was happening that like there's a real problem here and when that happened she invited my little sister and I to a restaurant and we sat down and we talked. And although it, it didn't, it wasn't really in depth because they're we were in a restaurant, but what that conversation did for me, it allowed me to get a glimpse, even just a little bit into my mom's story because she was able to tell me a little bit more about her relationship with her mom, what she didn't get growing up, what she didn't get as a child. And so as a result, it opened my eyes a little bit to help me say, well, you basically, how could she give me what she didn't get? 
that was a game changer for me because it, it made me willing to be more forgiving. After I was so, able to, to listen to her story and determine maybe, you know, why she was some of the ways that she is and why, why I didn't get some of the things that I needed from her, hearing that she didn't get those things either, it made it so much easier for me to open my eyes and be like, well, geez, like, you know, because now I'm looking at it from a logical standpoint versus an emotional standpoint. And I can say, you know, a person can't give you what they don't have. I can't give you what I didn't get because I don't know it either. And so that, that made it that much easier. Just learning her story, equipping myself with that information made it a lot easier. It made me open to forgiveness because prior to that, I wasn't. I was still upset and I didn't feel like there was no excuse and there was no reason. But that's because I didn't have the information. So step two is... <clears throat> Step two is to equip yourself with the information. Go get the story. Talk to people who know your parents. Talk to your parents if you can. Talk to your siblings. Just whoever's involved in the situation. If, you're, if your specific need of healing is a breakup or something like that, maybe talk to someone who, if you can't talk to your ex-husband, your ex-girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, if you can't talk to that person because you aren't in the space, you don't have a relationship, or it's not safe for whatever reason, safe physically or emotionally, maybe talk to someone who knew them. Maybe try just do some research about your issue with that person. The whole idea is just equip yourself with the information you need to be able to process it and move forward. Which brings me to step three. Step three is to assess the information. Once you equip yourself with the story or the knowledge, whatever it is, break that information down. Break it down into parts. Like I said, with me breaking that information down, an example of that was me then understanding after knowing the story, me understanding that she couldn't give me what she didn't have. She could provide me, she could teach me things that she didn't learn herself. And so me further breaking that information down looked like, well, I'm upset about not being able to juggle finances in school and not knowing what to do with my finances. But then I look at the life of people in my family, not very many people are well off. Not very many people are rich or, or that I know that are still living while I'm living today. Not very many of them are extremely wealthy or doing well or have figured out this great path to what we, what we think of as success today. So being, so then I had to, as assessing that information, I had to really think about it. Like at some point it just didn't even make sense to be upset anymore because it's like one after assessing that and after really considering that, I just basically had to realize I may have to be the person to create this change. I like, we say breaking generational curses. I may be the person who has to implement this, this part of the journey. I may be the person who has to insert myself into my lineage in this particular way in order for it to change for my, our future generations. Nobody before me that I know of has done it. So I was upset about not getting information and not having resources and you know thinking that life could have been easier or life could have been different if, if somebody would have taught me X, Y, Z. If somebody would have taught me financial stability, if somebody would have taught me financial literacy, credit. You know what I mean? I, I felt like I suffered a lot because of things I didn't know. And when, you, when I broke down, when I heard those stories of my mom, her mom, their family members, when they were growing up, and I'm looking around, I'm assessing the information, step three, I'm looking around at my family. I'm looking at distant family, close family, and seeing that, wow, I mean, nobody has really done the things I want to do. So being upset that they didn't teach me the things I feel like I should know didn't make sense anymore. It just didn't make sense. So that helped me not be taken a step further. So now not only am I more open to forgiving, now I'm willing to actually do it because it just didn't make sense to stay mad <laughs> because you have to ask yourself, what are you mad at at this point? Is there anything anyone could have done differently to change it? Probably not. The fourth step in how to forgive, you got to determine why it's important to let this go. You got to determine why it's important to be forgiving for you. So everybody will say, you know, you forgive because you're supposed to, you forgive because you don't want to harbor this information. You forgive. There's so many different reasons people will give you, but you have to determine why it's important for you to forgive and let this go. I know I really hate, I'm, I'm, I am probably the biggest advocate for not telling people just get over it. I hate that. I despise it. And I feel like it is the most dismissive way that you can handle a person who is coming to you either with an issue, whether I don't care how long ago it was. Because a lot of people will say, oh, you guys are 30. You can't still be blaming your parents. You're 20. You can't blame your parents forever. Not understanding that it's not about blame. It's not at all about blame. It's not even about the responsibility of whose responsibility it was to take care of this, to do that, teach that, do this. It's not even about that. What, what I understand is that because I, I've gone through this, it's important to feel validated in the times that you just simply want somebody to understand what you're going through. It's important to feel validated when you just want somebody to acknowledge, I could have done better. Because a lot of times what we'll get um, was that people did their best. But one thing I did 
this is how I did my step four, and I determined that it was why it was important for me to move forward and forgive to make sure that nobody has to endure the struggles that what I feel were unnecessary struggles because of a lack of information or a lack of resources. So now I have a job to do. So I can't say I can't dwell on what didn't happen for me. I got to make a change and I got to do it pretty quickly so that those after me don't have to suffer when I know I could have did something about it. And it takes me right into number five of how to forgive. The fifth thing I did, I had to determine what I was going to do differently. I put a lot of effort into thinking about what I feel like would have made a difference for me, what resource, what those resources were that could have made a difference in my life, what those what those things were that I feel like I lacked from my parents. All those, I, I com encompassed all of those things and I decided that I was just gonna make a change. I had to put thought into, a lot of thought into what I was gonna do better, what I was going to make easier for my child, you know, how we were gonna live differently, how we were gonna communicate differently, the kind of time we are gonna spend. And what that did for me is it gave me, not only just do I have this responsibility now, but it gave me something to look forward to. It kind of, it poured into me as it relates to my purpose. It poured into me as it relates to why I'm here on this earth. Now I'm refueled and I want to forgive because that energy I, would, I was using to be upset, to be angry, to have resentment, I don't have time, I can't put my energy there anymore because I have a new path. I have a new purpose. I'm working on my healing journey and as I do that, I know that I can't harbor anger and resentment because it's gonna to take too much away from what I'm now trying to create for my land. It may not be a parental situation for you. It may be it may be assault of some kind. It may be a bad relationship. It could, there are all sorts of things. It could be childhood abuse. It could be just a, a terrible relationship that left you torn and broken and destroyed. But that number five, determine what you're gonna do better. Determine what you're gonna do differently. No matter what the situation is, you can always sit back and gather that information and use it to figure out, educate yourself. Educate yourself on how you can do it better. What will you do differently in the next relationship? What will you do better as a preliminary factors? To, to the, what will you do before the next relationship to prepare yourself better? You know what I mean? So I'm just giving examples because these five things can apply to how to forgive in any situation. Uh, I really hope that this was helpful to you guys. Again, you know that Home Cook Conversations is my baby, but it's out here for the world. This is me sharing myself with the world in a new way. This is me giving to you guys. This is the healing part of Chef Arthur Healer. And I hope that it was helpful to you. I hope that it's something in here triggered a thought for you that, would, that can bring you change or get you a step closer to forgiveness. If you have questions, leave them for me in the comments. If this was helpful to you, drop me a yellow heart in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. I love y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Home Put Conversations with Queen Chef. I'm out.